Sadhguru, this question is from Karunesh. Namaskaram Sadhguru. You have spoken in so many prestigious and globally recognized institutes, organizations and conferences. But still there is a segment of yellow media which constantly dislikes you and dishes out most unreasonable and baseless trash against you. <laughs> Why do you attract such incendiary criticism which no other spiritual leader in the country attracts? See, look at the way I am, that's why <laughs> Well, uh, see this is mango season, the tree is full of fruit. This is mango season. Only that tree which is full of fruit gets the maximum amount of stones, worms, insects, everything. If you were a tree with a thorny tree, doesn't have a fruit, who will throw a stone at you? Nobody will throw a stone at you. Nobody wants to waste a throne at you, stone at you, uh, you know, nobody wants to waste a stone for you. If you're full of fruit, all the time they will be throwing stones. So that is an indication, it's a barometer, it's a thermometer that you have fruit. That's why they're I'm using the word thermometer intentionally, okay? Right now it's the most valued thing. Everybody is asking, where is the thermometer? <laughs> Not enough thermometers <laughs> So, uh, these people have been going at us for the last twenty-seven years, all local only, nowhere else, only local stuff. I must tell you this, probably many of you uh, do not know about these things. What has been the nature of this kind of stuff going on? This is in 1995, 1994, we have moved in here, about sixty-five, seventy of us. Ah, a very <laughs> what to say, very fiery, determined group of people. And uh, nothing, only one hut was there, just one hut in which we are all living, one lo a long hut, only ladies have toilets, men are all going into the forest. At that time, <laughs> some people are sitting in the mountains and looking at us with binoculars. Well, I'm, you know, this is my problem. If I just look like this, I see everything that's around me. I don't miss anything. That is also a lot of problem. <laughs> because if you're blind, people will have compassion. If you can see, they're envious of you. So I saw binoculars flashing. Then I asked, who is this uh, binoculars flashing? In this mountain, obviously it's directed towards us. So I sent our volunteers, who is this? Somebody must be here. Okay, some jeeps were parked here, found it. So uh, we tried to talk to them, they were not willing to talk to us and tell us who they are. But they went out and spread all kinds of things in the town. They said, we saw in the binoculars, they are crazy, they are… they must be using drugs, they must be doing this, they must be doing that. The problem was uh, people were freely poaching into the forest. After we came, we put a stop to that, that became a big issue. So this committed group of people who had their hobbies and their little businesses going based on the forest products, got really messy with us. They hired media, not the mainstream media, there is another kind of media which uh, doesn't run on advertisement or the revenue that they get by selling their journals because nobody buys them. Even if you give it free, people won't use it. You can't even use it for uh, rolling uh, pakodi or vada or something because it's too full of shit for anything. <laughs> uh, 
Of course it can't be toilet paper because it's already soiled. <laughs> this is going on. So, uh, you know, there is a railway track from uh, Sakleshpur to Mangalore, a thirty-six kilometer stretch, meter gauge railway track. Now I think they converted to broad gauge. In this thirty-six kilometers, there are over one hundred tunnels and three hundred bridges. So I had trekked this railway track a few times myself. So I had spoken to our people here and I said, we should all go there once. So those days there is no temple yet, no compulsions for us, so we closed down our ashram. Closing down the ashram means what? There is no door to lock, it's just a hut. But we tied a rope and uh, buildings were just coming up, triangular building was just coming up at that time. So we decided we will go for a about twelve, thirteen days trek. So all of us went off, leaving the ashram. You can't imagine th those times <laughs> and now how we are. <laughs> we could just close the ashram and go somewhere. So we went for a trek. Uh, after about twelve, thirteen days, uh, we had to come back. By about ninth, tenth day, people started calling us because we are in the media, big time. Why means we have killed somebody and buried them here and we have all left. Well, <laughs> who did we kill, we did not know. <laughs> then we came back. By then, big buzz all over, oh, they killed somebody and they've buried in the forest and gone. Well, of course, uh, this trash prints it, all this stuff. Then when we come back, the day or… the day we come back or just the previous evening, the forest department went about looking for the smell that was coming and they dug up a place and they found Somebody had killed a python, a large python, skinned it, take, taken the skin and buried the body in the forest and gone, and it's smelling. So these people made up the story that we killed somebody and we've left the place. So from then on it started. They're still going on with the same stories or similar stories. We've moved on, come a long way but they are unfortunately in the same place. I want them also to move on. But, uh, you know, too deep in shit. I'll tell you this, you won't believe the kind of things. The first batch of brahmacharis came. I told all the male brahmacharis, fifteen days you must go and serve in an old age home. All the female brahmacharinis, I told them, you must go and serve in a children's home. So we found a children's home in Coimbatore, which was run by an old lady. I had stayed in the children's home earlier when I came to Coimbatore. Mm, very rudimentary place. They went and stayed there. The food was very poor. Three of our uh, brahmacharinis, three or four or five of them, I think. Uh, the food was very poor. And all of them fell ill. They had severe bouts of vomiting and diarrhea. So uh, three of them had to be admitted in a local nursing home. Immediately this same media writes, so these people from the uh, Isha Yoga Center, Brahmacharinis, have all come for an abortion in a nursing home. These are the people, what to do with them? They live in filth and sell filth because it doesn't sell. They have also realized that once in three months if they put my photograph on their cow page, their rag sells a bit. It's their livelihood. What a horrible way to make you one's livelihood. I wish uh, they find better ways to do it. So it doesn't matter because I have uh, consciously <laughs> made myself like this, that you can either love me or hate me, you cannot be in between. 
because I don't like the in-between people. But unfortunately, these people don't even hate you, they're just trying to make a living out of you, parasite existence. Well, at least in these times of virus, I hope they realize, but no, now they're making a controversy about the virus also, that virus originated from Isha Yoga Center. <laughs> See, some of you were upset when I said, when I used the word one, but now our media is reporting virus originated from Isha Yoga Center. Not the mainstream media, most responsible media is not doing that of any kind. But this trash is doing this. There are, you know, four-page, five-page articles, I'm on the cover page of this. Uh, I don't know why this kind of journalism was referred to as LO, maybe because it's shitty. <laughs> so I am on the cover page uh, of these magazines once again. The reason why they continue to be against me for always is <laughs> Unfortunately, most people handle this kind of media by paying them off. Openly, they ask for money, but we are determined never to pay them. Because uh, we have not yielded to ransom, we are being <laughs> we are being continuously harassed by them, simply because uh, we have not yielded to their ransom tactics.